Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we are discussing Real Artists Don't Starve by Jeff Goines. This 2017 release serves as a powerful antidote to the age old myth that artists must suffer and starve for the sake of their passion. Instead, it paints a vivid picture of a world wherein being an artist does not mean to compromise on practicality or viability. It celebrates the emergence of a new renaissance and provides direction on how you can be a part of it. The author, Jeff Goines, is no stranger to the world of art. With a past in music and a present in writing, he has transformed his love for art into a successful career. His expertise is evident in his mission to assist others in turning their artistic dreams into tangible reality. His acclaimed writings include the best-selling The Art of Work and more on goingswriter.com. Real artists don't starve is an essential read for aspiring artists, individuals who find little satisfaction in their current occupations, and creatively inclined readers seeking fresh inspiration and motivation. So, Let's dive in and explore how artists can indeed thrive without having to starve. Real artists don't starve. Timeless strategies for thriving in the new creative age. Introduction. Unleash your potential. Dispelling the myth of the starving artist. Imagine the life of an impoverished poet clinging to the edge of society, fueled by passion yet bound by the chains of financial hardship. It's a scenario that has been romanticized in literature and pop culture. The idea of the starving artist, dedicated to their craft, despite the immense struggle to merely survive. While this might seem dramatic and compelling, the harsh reality of it is far from enviable. Conversely, What most artists aspire to is not just survival, but a fulfilling, successful career, making a living, or even thriving, from their art. Our goal today is to examine how this dream can indeed be transformed into reality. As we delve into this, we'll also debunk some prevailing myths about the nature of a true artist and demonstrate how any artist, irrespective of their field, can achieve prosperity. Through this journey, we'll challenge the outdated notion of the naturally gifted genius, as well as the common belief that artists must aggressively promote themselves at every turn. Along the way, you'll learn to distinguish valuable insights from misleading stereotypes that often permeate the world of arts. In this exploration, we'll witness the transformative journey of a lawyer who became a best selling author by committing merely half an hour a day. To creative writing. We'll discover why a staggering 122 rejection letters failed to deter an artist's perseverance, reinforcing the importance of resilience in the face of adversity. Lastly, we'll find out how close we were to missing the charm of Rolf the dog, a beloved member of the Muppets, emphasizing the value of fortuitous occurrences in the journey of an artist. Part 1. Anyone can bloom in the world of art and real artists know the art of borrowing. Through the ages, our perception of what it means to be a genuine artist has been clouded by common misconceptions. These widespread cliches often depict artists as impoverished, naturally gifted, and intensely original. Unfortunately, such stereotypes can discourage people from entering the realm of arts and inhibiting them from reaching their creative zenith. So. Let's dive into two of the most prominent misconceptions about artists, that they're born with a natural flair and that their creations must be entirely original. Firstly, becoming an artist doesn't necessarily require a birthright of talent. Rather, it demands hard work, perseverance, and resolve. Armed with these virtues, even a person entrenched in the corporate world can metamorphose into an artist. The perfect illustration of this is the journey of the lawyer turned best selling author, John Grisham. Grisham started by dedicating just 30 to 60 minutes every day to pen down a page of his book. Three years into this routine, he completed his maiden novel, A Time to Kill. 
even though it was rejected by an astonishing 40 publishers, his determination never wavered, and he began writing his second novel, The Firm. Eventually, his persistence bore fruit, with both books turning into bestsellers. The success was so phenomenal that Grisham could bid goodbye to his law practice and fully immerse himself in his writing. His books even pioneered a new literary genre, the legal thriller. While unwavering dedication to your craft is pivotal, striving to be wholly original or revolutionize an art form isn't a prerequisite for success. Instead, understanding the art of borrowing ideas is what matters. Echoing Picasso's famed words, good artists copy, great artists steal. However, this shouldn't be interpreted as a call for plagiarism or blatant imitation. There's an unwritten code among artists that endorses absorbing an existing idea and enhancing it, stretching it beyond its original scope. An apt example of this is the creation of The Muppets. The show's creator, Jim Henson, ingeniously amalgamated Burr Tilstrom's puppetry techniques with the humor and jest of comedians like Ernie Kovacs. The result? An entirely fresh and engaging creation. Now, Let's explore what enables an artist not just to survive, but to flourish. Part two, to flourish as an artist, embrace the virtues of resilience and humility. The stereotype of the starving artist may be just a myth, but it doesn't mean the path of an artist is free from hurdles. Inevitably, there will be moments of rejection and failure, and it is during these tough times that your resilience, or stubbornness, if you will, can become your lifeline. Interestingly, if you've felt drawn towards the arts, it's likely that you possess a resilient, determined streak, an inherent refusal to surrender or adhere to prescribed rules. Psychologist Paul Torrance suggests that most creative individuals are mavericks and nonconformists, often finding it challenging to fit into conventional social molds. So, Expect to face difficulties on your artistic journey, but remember that holding steadfastly to your resilience can help you surmount these obstacles. Consider the story of F. Scott Fitzgerald, who, while trying to kickstart his writing career, faced an onslaught of 122 rejection letters. Despite this, Fitzgerald persevered until he saw his first two books published. These books eventually won him critical acclaim and financial success. Regrettably, Fitzgerald's later years were marred by a plummeting self-confidence, worsened by critics' harsh appraisal of his third novel, The Great Gatsby. A tragic combination of alcoholism and a heart attack would claim his life at a mere 44. Yet, three years after his death, The Great Gatsby underwent a reassessment, achieving status as a modern classic, thereby reinforcing the essentiality of persistence. The journey of an artist also requires humility. It's this quality that enables an aspiring artist to grow and learn through a productive mentorship. The enduring myth of the starving artist can partially be attributed to certain artists' overconfidence in their own talent, leading them to financial ruin. Conversely, a flourishing artist is one who acknowledges the need to continuously learn and evolve, they seek out mentorships with masters of their craft, much like Michelangelo did, under the tutelage of the celebrated Renaissance painter Domenico Ghirlandaio. For any mentorship to be successful, it requires humility and an openness to learning from the mentor. No mentor is inclined to guide someone who believes there's nothing more for them to learn. Part 3. Artists Thrive in a Community and they need the support of collaborators and patrons. There's a romanticized myth about artists, that they live isolated, solitary lives, working relentlessly in quiet solitude until their masterpiece is ready to be revealed to the world. While it is a picturesque idea, it's far from the truth. Creative brilliance does not flourish in isolation. It is far more common and rewarding for artists to form lively communities and nurturing environments mutually supporting one another in their creative endeavors. This pattern has been observed throughout history. Post-World War I. Paris, for instance, was a creative hotbed where notable personalities like Ezra Pound, 
Ernest Hemingway and James Joyce lived and worked in close proximity. Closer to our times, technological innovators in places like Silicon Valley collaborate to create astounding software solutions, a feat unlikely to be achieved by a solitary programmer holed up in a basement. To attract collaborators, you need to know where to look. It is crucial to study your field, identify top artists, and understand what sets their work apart. This is particularly evident in today's hip-hop scene. Some critics have frowned upon artists like Beyonce and Kanye West because their albums have been crafted with the help of numerous collaborators. However, this is not a sign of their inferiority. Instead, it reflects their visionary ability to assemble a team of skilled individuals to create a powerful piece of art. Michelangelo, too, undertook projects that were beyond his individual capability. He acted as both an engineer and a foreman, guiding others to complete distinct tasks. Another essential element for a thriving artist is the support of a patron. A patron is not confined to a specific type. They could be a critic, a tastemaker, or anyone capable of propelling the artist's career forward. Consider the story of Elvis Presley, whose meteoric rise to fame was facilitated by Sam Phillips, the owner of Sun Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. A teenage Elvis, nervous but determined, sang out a perfect rendition of That's All Right Mama in front of Phillips. Recognizing Elvis's potential, Phillips ensured that the song was broadcast on the radio that same night. Within two years, Elvis Presley was a name known to every American teenager. Part 4. Thriving artists engage with their audience and share their work fearlessly. Locating your audience is a vital step in transitioning from a starving artist to a thriving one. And in today's digital age, it's simpler than ever for emerging artists to gain visibility. Many artists recoil at the thought of marketing and advertising, viewing it as somewhat distasteful. However, there are more natural and organic methods now available to share your art and cultivate a following. A consistently updated blog revealing your creative process is one such method. Consider Stephanie Halligan as an example. She always aspired to be an animator, but found herself buried under $34,579 in debt upon graduating college. Consequently, she accepted a position as a financial consultant for underprivileged families. In 2012, she launched a blog titled The Empowered Dollar, where she disseminated valuable financial advice she'd learned on the job. Nevertheless, her creative calling persisted, and after two years of steadily growing her blog's audience, she began supplementing her posts with her own cartoons. Suddenly, Halligan's creative spark was reignited. She began selling prints of her cartoons to her readers, launched a new art blog, and started acquiring clients, including banks and universities, who admired her motivational cartoons. Today's artists also use the internet to interact directly with their audience. Emerging musicians, for example, experiment with new songs and release demos, while visual artists share works in progress in a myriad of ways, such as through platforms like Bandcamp. This is akin to practicing in public. Not only is it an effective way to build an audience, but it also aids in your improvement as an artist. Practicing your guitar in your room might enhance your skills to a certain degree, but the moment you start performing in front of an audience, you'll witness a palpable improvement in your playing. This exemplifies the simple yet profound impact of an audience. Part 5. Never sell your talent short and strive to retain the rights to your creation. One damaging trap many artists fall into is accepting work without any payment. This usually happens when they're enticed with promises of beneficial exposure or worthwhile opportunities. But much like unpaid internships, this is often merely a ploy to exploit your skills and talents. To flourish as an artist and avoid slipping into the starving artist stereotype, you need to develop a mindset that recognizes your worth, affirm that you are indeed an artist and that your creativity has monetary value. Asserting the value of your artistic work is tantamount to elevating the entire artistic profession, a stance fiercely championed by Michelangelo. He argued that artistry was a noble occupation deserving of recognition. 
insisting that artists should be referred to by their surnames, a privilege typically reserved for the aristocracy of the era. Taking a leaf from Michelangelo's book, contemporary novelist Stephen Pressfield proposes that you transform into an artist the moment you start identifying as one. So go ahead and print those business cards, proclaiming you as a painter, writer or graphic artist, and ensure you charge for your work appropriately. Ownership is another crucial factor for artists aiming to thrive. Numerous artists, when starting out, have signed agreements relinquishing the rights to their work in exchange for a lump sum, decisions they almost always regret in hindsight. Thankfully, Jim Henson, creator of The Muppets, managed to sidestep this pitfall. Early in his career, the Purina Dog Food Company offered him $10,000 for the rights to his creation, Rolf the Dog. While his agent believed it was a good deal, Henson wisely declined. Had he accepted, Rolf wouldn't have been the beloved character audiences enjoyed in The Muppet Show years later. So, the key takeaway is this. If you want to command respect, you need to maintain ownership and always charge for your work. This approach allows you to participate in the new renaissance, a concept we'll explore in our concluding segment. Part 6. The dawn of the new renaissance brings artists who are multifaceted and refuse to starve for their craft. Often, a person possessing a wide array of skills across various professions is perceived as less competent compared to someone specializing in a single talent. This notion, however, was quite the contrary during the Renaissance. The term Renaissance man characterized a versatile artisan, someone capable of practicing multiple trades. Today, we're witnessing the rise of a new breed of artists that hearken back to this ideal, those of the new Renaissance. Given the unprecedented ways we currently have to share and access creative tools, we are indeed experiencing the advent of a new Renaissance. Today's artists, much like their Renaissance counterparts, are those who endlessly seek mastery in more than a single craft. This curiosity not only enriches their life, but also enhances their work. Mark Frauenfelder is a perfect example of this kind of artist. Trained as a mechanical engineer, he co-founded the website Boing Boing, which started as a small zine for creatively inclined individuals in the late 80s. Since then, it has blossomed into a highly frequented website. Frauenfelder has also served as an associate editor for Wired magazine, authored a book on magic tricks, and showcased his own art at exhibitions throughout the United States. Frauenfelder is aware that society often frowns upon those who don't fit neatly into one specific category. However, he has attained success by pursuing his artistic passions, regardless of where they lead. This approach has enabled Frauenfelder to avoid the cliched fate of the starving artist. He views the quest for financial gain as a means to becoming his own patron, using his earnings to fuel his creative endeavors and sustain this virtuous cycle. So, liberate yourself from the starving artist mindset and adopt the persona of a thriving artist by learning from and borrowing ideas from the greats. Seek an apprenticeship to master your craft under the guidance of an expert and persist in your journey to discover your audience. And most importantly, never forget this golden rule. Never work for free. Final summary. The essential takeaway from this book, the long-held notion of the starving artist is nothing more than a romanticized myth that deserves to be dismantled. Given the abundance of creative tools and platforms to exhibit one's art to the world, embracing the starving artist mindset is entirely unnecessary. Instead, to become a successful and thriving artist, Begin by thoroughly studying your craft and seeking guidance from an individual you respect. With consistent practice and determination, you will be able to create extraordinary works of art. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. 
If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.